Okay, let's talk about quadratic equations. And uh, this video is going to be a quick summary on quadratic equations, and it's going to be like a perfect little review for those of you who might be taking a uh, chapter test on quadratic equations. I'm not going to teach you everything about quadratic equations here. That would just be, you know, like a five hour long video. Because Just think about how much you learned about quadratic equations as you studied in your uh, class. And if you don't know about quadratic equations, then this is a great kind of summary video. And I'm going to kind of go through the big picture topics of quadratic equations. We'll make it a kind of a quick review. Um, and really highlight the things you need to know about quadratic equations. So if you're taking a test, and if you don't know some of these concepts, then you need to follow through. So I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to do more detailed study in these particular areas, and we're going to get to this nice uh, summary in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. So I have all those uh, particular main courses that people take. But I also have tons of specialty courses, especially in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, uh, teacher certification exam, AccuPlacer, Alex. Uh, there's a ton of different reasons why people study mathematics outside of a math class. So if you're studying for one of those tests, just go to my site, check out uh, our course catalog. I should have your test of it. Don't drop me a line and I'll give you my best suggestion. I also work with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you out there just struggling in your math class. But one thing you can be doing to help yourself out in mathematics is to be taking great math notes. Uh, it's kind of my golden rule of math over decades of teaching it. Just one thing is absolutely clear to me. Those students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students are just like, you know, like to look at their phone and talk to their friends. I get it. I was a young person once, and by the way, too, if I had a cell phone when I was, uh, you know, a student, I don't even think I would pass. So we have a lot of distractions, and the only way to keep yourself not distracted is to engage in an activity that's going to keep you focused, and that is note-taking. Okay, so improve on your notes and your grade. Everything will get better. Okay, I promise you that. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. So if you want some uh, more detailed notes on quadratic equations, you, I would suggest like my algebra 1 notes or algebra 2 notes. Okay? All right. And obviously... If you really, really want to master this stuff, I would suggest my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course because um, you're going to really, you know, like get really deep into this stuff and master it. You'll, you'll end up with like an outstanding grade on your test, I'm sure. Okay, so let's get into quadratic equations, a quick summary of it. And let's just put it down right here. Quadratic equations. And we'll get into it by starting off what are quadratic equations. Okay, so this is the first thing you need to know. What is a quadratic equation? Well, it is a polynomial, all right? We need to know that quadratic equations are polynomials and they're degree two, degree two polynomials. That's what they are, okay? So, but what does that mean, okay? Well, it means that there's something called, and we'll just kind of put it in here, in a little uh, graphic kind of way to kind of summarize quadratic equations. There's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra that states that if you're dealing with a polynomial, okay, how many solutions uh, that polynomial equation will have is going to be equal to the degree of that polynomial. So the fundamental theorem of algebra states that, oh, uh, degree two polynomials are by definition quadratic equations. So that means that all quadratic equations all will have two solutions always. Okay, so when you're solving quadratic equations, that's a big part if you're studying quadratic equations or quadratic functions, a huge part of what you study is how to solve quadratic equations. Okay, just know this, that you will always have two solutions. Always, always, always. Why? Because a quadratic equation is a polynomial. Okay, it's a degree two polynomial. And a the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us 
that degree two polynomials will always have two solutions. Now, what type of solutions do polynomials have? Okay, so two solutions, all right. So what type of solutions? Well, they're gonna either be two real numbers or you're gonna have two imaginary or complex numbers. Okay, so you need to know something about imaginary numbers. So I'll give you a quick example over here. Let's take this basic quadratic equation, x squared is equal to 16. All right, so this is a polynomial, okay? It's a degree two polynomial. Now this is the easiest a quadratic equation you'll ever have on a test. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your teacher may not even put this in. They'll be like, that's too easy. But I don't know, maybe you have a nice, easy teacher, and that's awesome if you do. But let's go ahead and just solve this, right? So how do we solve that? Well, we have to take the square root of both sides. So x is going to be equal to positive and negative 4. The square root of a positive 16 is positive and negative 4, all right? So that means that x is equal to 4, that's one solution, and our second solution is negative 4. So those are our two solutions to this real basic quadratic equation. Now, how about this quadratic equation? x squared is equal to negative 16. All right, well, you need to know how to deal with these guys. If you try to take the square root of both sides, and you should, okay, and if you go into your calculator and take the square root of negative 16, you are going to have an expression like this. You're going to be like, I don't understand what my calculator is telling me. It's giving me some sort of error because your calculator is uh, kind of set to deal with real numbers. Now, you, know, you, you can interpret and set up your graphing calculator and scientific calculator to work in imaginary numbers, but you got to know how to, you got to know something about imaginary complex numbers just, you know, uh, to be able to interpret your calculator. So, in this situation, uh, you know, let's just kind of uh, go back here, uh, take a step um, back. We have x squared is equal to negative 16. Well, this is a quadratic equation. And the fundamental theorem of algebra tells me there is two solutions. So there are solutions to this, okay? It's not like, they're like I can't do this. My calculator doesn't like that. No, there are two solutions. And the way I go about it is to take the square root of both sides. But x is going to be equal to positive and negative 4 I. Okay. Now this video is, I cannot possibly teach you all these subsets of things. We're doing a quick review. Now, a couple suggestions here, all right. If you're uh, struggling with quadratic equations, I have tons of videos on quadratic equations and all these kind of subtopics within my algebra and algebra two playlist on my YouTube channel. But if you really want to know this, I would say you can jump into maybe my um, algebra one or algebra two course in my math program and you know you're going to see a ton of instruction and example problems really really help you prepare for any particular exam that you might be taking all right so just so you know i'm just trying to make the point here there's always two solutions either real number or imaginary complex okay all right so let's erase this and continue on with our discussion of quadratic equations everyone's favorite topic so let's start over here how do we solve quadratic equations? Okay, well, there's a number of different ways we can solve quadratic equations. Not a, not a crazy number of different ways, but it all depends on the situation. We can take the square root of both sides. Okay, we want to try to take the square root of both sides if we can. That would be uh, an example like this guy right here. X squared is equal to 16. If I take the square root of both sides, okay, I can solve this type of quadratic equation where there's no x term like so that works out okay but what happens if i have x squared plus x equals 16. well now i cannot take the square root of both sides so i need other techniques okay and those other techniques would include factoring all right so factoring is an excellent technique to solve quadratic equations so um when you uh factor, let's kind of look at something like this, x squared uh, plus x equals zero, okay? So this is a basic quadratic equation, right? So we have a polynomial, degree two, and by the degree, the degree of a polynomial is it's the highest power, okay? So this is a degree two, this is a first degree term, this is to the first power, but this highest power of this polynomial is two. So that means that's it's degree two polynomial. But to solve this, if we have this thing set equal to zero and we can factor, you want to factor, okay? I would not take the square root of both sides, 
by moving this term over the, uh, to the other side like this. That's not going to help us out. So you need to be able to recognize patterns in terms of factoring. So if I can factor this, which I can, and it's set equal to zero, okay, this right here, you have to have this thing set equal to zero. So this would be x times x plus 1 is equal to zero, all right? Now, this case, if you can factor, you should definitely factor. Uh, again, the equation has to be set equal to zero, and then you set each factor equal to zero. So in this case, x is equal to zero, and x plus 1 is equal to zero. So this is one solution, and x equals negative 1 is the other solution. So this is a great technique to do, okay? So factoring if the situation calls for it. The square root of both sides if the situation calls for it, and if you can. Okay, now... Factoring, by the way, will require you to know how to factor the greatest common factor and oftentimes trinomials. So if you can't factor trinomials or greatest common factor or other type of factoring situations, you're going to really struggle with quadratic equations. You need to boost your factoring skills. Okay. Again, you know, all these sub skills, if you need help on them, check out uh, my other videos in my uh, algebra channel, or sorry, algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, or just you know jump into my algebra course. But again, you need to know how to factor trinomials, greatest common factors, because this will be a situation that your, uh, your teacher will expect you to be able to solve. Now, what happens if you can't take the square root of both sides and you can't factor? Okay, what about in that situation? Well, we have something called the quadratic formula. And we love the quadratic formula. It is awesome. Here it is right here. You need to know this thing by heart. X equals minus B plus minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So uh, if and we're talking about the coefficients of a polynomial, AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. This should be familiar to you. Okay, if you're taking a quadratic equations test, you need to know how to work with the quadratic formula. Again, I have tons of um, videos on this, but basically the, qu the quadratic formula is our uh, technique of last resort. If I can't take the square root of both sides, and if I can't factor, well, then I have to then default to the quadratic formula. You don't want to pick the quadratic formula as your first primary way of solving a quadratic equation. You don't want to do that. Okay, you want to see if you can use these other techniques, and if you can't, if something can't be factored and you can't do this, well, then then you can just jump into the quadratic formula. Remember, there's always going to be two solutions, because okay? so there's always going to be a way to find these uh, solutions. So if you can't factor it, can't take the square root of both sides, then we have to use the quadratic formula. So knowing how to use a quadratic formula and avoid common mistakes is critical, okay? So you need to understand that for sure. Now, a long way, okay, of doing the quadratic formula, the quadratic formula is actually a shortcut of something called completing the square. You need to know how to use, uh, how to do the, uh, complete the square, okay? But completing the square is not a primary technique. You can actually solve quadratic equations by completing the square. And you, you will be asked to do this on test, but I want you to realize that in, in a practical sense, completing the square is a long version of the quadratic formula. And there's a whole discussion behind that, but just kind of uh, trust me on this one. You don't use completing the square as kind of like a primary technique. Okay, if you can't solve a quadratic equation by these techniques here, then you're gonna use a quadratic formula. You wouldn't just start using and complete the square. And I'm kind of speaking in generalities, but that's a good way to kind of think of it. But you need, you definitely need to know how to complete the square, and this confuses a lot of students, right? So you can see on a quadratic equations test, there is, you know, a lot involved, okay? Now let's get back to the, the type of solutions a quadratic equation has. So there, you're going to need to know something called the discriminant, okay? And the discriminant, let me go ahead and put that uh, quadratic equation. Uh, formula back up, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This part right here of the quadratic formula is called the discriminant. You need to understand that. And this, depending on whether it's a positive value, a negative value, or zero, will determine, well, basically is an indicator to tell us what type of solutions and roots we're going to have in our quadratic equation. So you need to know about the discriminant. Again, 
Um, you know, I can't possibly teach all this uh, in this video. There's just too much information, but check out my additional videos on my channel or again, uh, check out my algebra course. All right, so the discriminant, right? So that's the B squared minus 4AC part of the quadratic formula. Now, along with um, all of this, some additional things you're gonna need to know uh, about quadratic equations is how to graph them, all right? And there's, this is a whole other topic, how to graph quadratic equations. So we're talking about parabolas, okay? And you need to know uh, where the vertex is at. You need to know the axis of symmetry. There's a lot of stuff about just how to graph, uh, you know, uh, parabolas. Again, I have additional videos on that, but you're gonna to need to know this, okay? How to find the vertex, uh, whether the parabola is this way or this way, if it's wide, skinny, all that kind of good stuff. And then one last thing that you often see on a quadratic equation test is quadratic inequalities. So let's kind of squeeze this guy over here. Inequalities, um, I'll just kind of abbreviate like so. So instead of a quadratic equation, you'll actually have an inequality symbol, and that is a whole nother set of techniques that you're gonna to have to follow. So there is a huge amount of information in a quadratic equations test, all right? This is kind of a structure, a summary of what you're gonna be facing, all right? And you don't wanna be weak in any of these particular areas. So even about like how to solve quadratic equations, you need to know all of this stuff, okay? Just to even handle quadratic equations, but there's going to be test questions um, on, hey, you know, graph the quadratic equation, uh, use completing the square, what type of uh, roots or solutions does this quadratic equation have? Your teacher is going to want to see your um, understanding of the discriminant, which means you need to understand how to deal with imaginary numbers, real numbers. You know, it's a, it's a lot, okay? Now, if you're some, you're taking a real basic, you know, algebra course and your teacher's giving you some basic questions, well, then that's fine too. But just so you know, you're really not mastering this huge, very, very important topic in algebra if you don't know all these uh, things right here, okay? So don't, don't panic. And by the way, too, we haven't even talked about word problems, okay? So quadratic equation word problems. So mathematics, it's, it's a lot, okay? Uh, this, you know, the whole purpose of this video is to help organize what you need to know for this test. So how do you get ready? Well, okay, first of all, you take a deep breath, you settle yourself down, but then you get jump into um, a material that can help you out, okay? So you need, if you don't have great notes, which a lot of you don't, okay, you're gonna need something else. So you can use my uh, videos on my YouTube channel or in a more formal way, check out my uh, course. But if you're gonna be facing a quadratic equations uh, test, Okay, and you definitely will if you're taking algebra um, or any course beyond that. This is the kind of stuff you need to know, right? And, and hopefully this video helped you organize your, you know, test uh, studying, you know, strategy. Okay, you got to hit all those different topics. All right, so if you found this video helpful, okay, please consider the l smashing that like button. It helped me out. And by the way, too, if I get a good response on this particular video, I think I'll do additional test summary videos and other uh, major topics, uh, chapter test topics in, in algebra and geometry, algebra two uh, and the like. Um, I think this video is definitely helpful because your teacher is gonna do a quick test review. Generally, most teachers uh, the day before um, or a day or two before will do a, a review like this, I know I did in my class, and then that just helps you know summarize the main points, okay? I'm not reteaching everything because it's just too much information, but a summary of the main points will definitely help you kind of organize what you kind of really need to, you know, uh, dive into deeper so you can get those skills down, okay? So you can do well on these tests. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos. Great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. But again, if you want my best help on this, um, this topic or any other math topic, just check out my math help program. Again, the, you can find the link to it in the description of this video. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on your quadratic equations test, if that's the situation, or any other math adventure you will be encountering, okay? Thank you for your time, and have a great day.